First on the night team, the race to grow and sell medical marijuana right here in Kentucky. It is our top story. Hello, everybody. Thank you for joining us. I'm Doug Profit. Today, it took a big new twist after the governor reveals thousands of people want one of those coveted bluegrass licenses. WHS 11 night team's Taylor Woods is talking with a patient tonight and local hemp business owner who applied for a license. 502 Hemp Wellness Center in Middletown sells THC gummies, CBD oil, and more. Dee Dee Taylor is amazed at the thousands of applications from people hoping to get a slice of medical cannabis in Kentucky. The numbers are crazy. I would not have expected that much. Taylor is the CEO and founder of 502 Hemp Wellness Center. She's been selling legal hemp products for the past six years and is one of thousands of people waiting to find out if she'll get approved for one of the two licenses available in Louisville to sell medical cannabis. With that many people vying for one dispensary, I just, or two dispensaries here, I'm just, I'm not really worried about it. I'm not losing any sleep over it. 630 applications for a dispensary license were submitted for this region. But most regions only get four dispensaries and that's it. And some counties have, have already opted out of even getting one. Governor Andy Bashir announced 4,998 applications were submitted to either cultivate, process, dispense, and test medical cannabis. Kentucky has collected over $20 million in non-refundable fees, and with an overwhelming amount of applications, a lottery will start in October. The most important thing is that we do it right and we do it safely. Jennifer Dunnigan depends on medical cannabis for epilepsy, cerebral palsy, and gastrophoresis. Because I have good days, and then I have bad days, and then there's really bad days. Dunnigan has to drive to Cincinnati just to get treatment. She's concerned about the limited number of dispensary licenses in Kentucky. It's not going to be near, near enough. No matter who is chosen for a license, Taylor hopes Kentuckians win. I really hope that we create the jobs that we need and we get the patients the help that they need. It will be a new job description for Kentucky in Louisville. Taylor Woods, WHAS 1119 on your side. And in his briefing today, Governor Andy Bashir said the new Office of Medical Cannabis is reviewing applications and the staff is now going to be increased to do all this. He said 29 people plus 20 more folks will be added to look over those new applications for medical marijuana. New tonight, Metro Police investigating after a body of a person was pulled from the Ohio River. Police say just after 7, they were called by a passerby who spotted the body floating near 9th Street and I-64. That, of course, is right on the western side of the downtown business district. The LMPD River Unit and the Louisville Fire Department recovered the body about an hour later at 10th and Rowan. Police are currently working to identify the remains. Also new tonight, federal prosecutors are hoping to show that former Metro Police Detective Brett Hankison has a pattern of interfering with SWAT team operations. His federal retrial will start in October. Those new court documents reveal new details about previous SWAT operations involving Hankison, including the botched raid on Brianna Taylor's apartment. Brett Hankison's actions in the Brianna Taylor raid on March 13, 2020, got him fired. And now he's facing a second federal trial. Federal prosecutors argue he shot blindly through Taylor's apartment window. They say after the initial shots, Hankison ran out of Taylor's breezeway and fired 10 shots through two windows along that side of her home. Those windows were covered by blinds and curtains. But investigators say those shots went right through her neighbor's apartment wall as well, where a child was sleeping. His first federal trial was declared a mistrial, but evidence presented during it shows that Hankison's shots allegedly came within several feet of where his fellow officers were standing in Taylor's doorway. In new court documents, prosecutors argue Hankison has two prior incidents they say also put fellow officers and civilians at risk. In 2016, Hankison was part of a narcotics investigation. SWAT officers were on scene to make an arrest, while Hankison and narcotics detectives were supposed to form a perimeter. Court documents say Hankison did not join the perimeter, but instead drew his handgun and ran between the suspect and the SWAT team, who had their rifles drawn. The second incident, happening in 2017, a few months later, SWAT officers were performing an undercover operation at a barber shop on Dixie Highway. As SWAT officers were waiting for customers to leave, court documents say Hankison aggressively entered the scene, driving the wrong way down Dixie Highway. Hankison allegedly had his gun pointed out of his window, blocked in a customer who was trying to leave and began yelling at them, blowing the SWAT team's cover. 
The judge in this case has yet to rule whether these incidents will be allowed to be introduced as evidence in the news case for October. Again, Hankinson's federal retrial has now been set to start on October 15th. Police in Jefferson Town, new but 11 are investigating after shots were fired in the parking lot of the Red Carpet Inn at I-64 and Hurstbourne Parkway. Police say just before 1130 this morning, a person in the parking lot was targeted in a shooting there at the Red Carpet Inn, but instead a stray bullet went right through the window of a nearby hotel room. That bullet grazed the arm of a guest in that room, causing a minor injury. Police say the person who was targeted was not shot and didn't have any injuries. You can call the J-Town Police Tip Line to help detectives at 502-267-0503. Louisville Metro Police are investigating after what appears to be a human skull discovered in a vacant building in the Portland neighborhood today. Police were called just after noon to 16th and Northwestern Parkway after construction crews found the skull in a burned out vacant building that they are demolishing. The skull was taken to the Kentucky Medical Examiner's Office for testing. No other details were given today. The man who was shot by police last Wednesday, he, that man accused of trying to carjack a woman right at the Walmart pharmacy drive through on the outer loop, had his bond lowered by a judge this morning as he appeared in court. The court will set a bond of 50000 full cash plus HIP if posted. Police say Randall Allen, you see him right here, was released from the hospital yesterday, then booked into the Louisville jail. He's facing several charges, including resisting arrest, unlawful imprisonment, and fleeing police. The judge in the case admitted the charges were serious and he has a past criminal record, but still lowered Allen's bond to $50,000. The prosecutor in the case said he wanted the bond to remain at $100,000, but the judge cut it in half. If he gets out, he will be put on home incarceration. They've wrapped it up in Nelson County. A surprise search is now over in one of Bardstown's biggest ongoing mysteries. Federal investigators ended their search of a property in Nelson County today in connection to the Crystal Rogers disappearance. From above, our Sky 11 drone shows the intricate FBI operation down below on Whitesides Drive, a property formerly owned by Anna Whitesides, Brooks Houck's grandmother. The sheriff confirming to us that they were searching for any remains of Crystal Rogers last seen over nine years ago. The focus is a small area near the property's tree line. Yesterday, that spot was covered by a tent. 24 hours later, agents were seen with buckets. According to the Nelson County Sheriff, the family that now owns the home is not connected and they're fully cooperating. The next court date for the three suspects in the Crystal Rogers case is scheduled for October. New tonight, the Georgia Bureau of Investigation has arrested the father of the boy who was accused of killing four people and injuring nine others in a school shooting. The father, Colin Gray, was taken into custody today, charged with involuntary manslaughter, second degree murder and cruelty to children. Gray's 14 year old named Colt is charged with four counts of murder. In an update for reporters tonight, the GBI said Colin knowingly allowed his son to possess a weapon even after the FBI had visited following alleged online threats made when Colt was just 13 years old. Law enforcement will continue to work ar uh, together around the clock in relation to this incident here and any other incidents that come up around this state that raise concern to the safety of our students, faculty and citizens here in the state of Georgia. Police identifying the victims as 14-year-old students Mason Shermerhorn and Christian Angulo. Teachers Richard Aspinwall and Christina Iremi. There has been no word yet on a motive from authorities, but it does not appear the victims were specifically targeted. Right now, all new on the night team, you can call it the Legacy Tour for longtime Kentucky Senator Mitch McConnell. The summer recess in Washington has McConnell touring the state right now, giving speeches, talking in a way we've not seen before. WHS 11 night team's Alexandra Goldberg and photojournalist Elijah McKenzie in Frankfurt with a groundbreaking in his honor. Just down the street from the state capitol, the Republican Party is expanding the building that bears the name of one senator who put them on the map in Kentucky. You see behind us where the future of Kentucky lies. Mitch McConnell's fingerprints remain all over the state, even with his time as the Senate minority leader soon coming to an end. I understand and emphasize the importance of our party to this state. He calls the expansion of the Kentucky Republican headquarters a symbol. I couldn't be prouder at this stage of my career 
to look at the Kentucky Republican Party today. McConnell has been touring Kentucky this summer, giving speeches unlike any in the past, talking about his legacy and his political rise in a once Democratic dominated Kentucky. That's how bleak the landscape was. But I was determined to try to change all that <laughs> and uh, turned out to be a hell of a lot tougher than I thought it was going to be. Kentucky House Speaker from Prospect, Republican David Osborne. And it's changed the trajectory of Kentucky, the Republican Party, and the nation. Other prominent Kentucky Republicans also reminiscing. U.S. Representative Andy Barr. This groundbreaking is really a symbol of the success of the modern Republican Party in Kentucky. McConnell remembered going to the fancy farm political picnic in western Kentucky not long after being elected senator, knowing he was way outnumbered. On our side, it was me and one county chairman. <laughs> This year, when you go down there, you can't find a different row with a flashlight. He's made no public decision on whether or not he will seek re-election, but his allies say don't count him out just yet. I don't think he's made a decision. Don't ever underestimate Mitch McConnell. I think there's a chance that he may. I asked him directly. Senator McConnell, we heard a lot about your legacy tonight. Will you seek re-election in 2026? And he has two more years to think about it. In Frankfurt, Alexandra Goldberg, WHS 1119, on your side. And with the general election coming up in November, Mitch McConnell has just about two more months left in his leadership position in the U.S. Senate after voluntarily announcing his retirement from that job. It marks an end to his long career in power, embracing mostly Reagan conservative ideals and reflects a party now shifting more towards Donald Trump's control of the Republican Party.